Hello, everyone. Welcome to November 17th's Lunch and Learn. The topic is website design, development, and maintenance. First, some housekeeping announcements. This meeting is being recorded and it will be posted on COTAC's website. Questions are welcome and we really encourage your participation and engagement. So please feel free to enter your questions in the chat box, but please stay muted until we call on or until we have the dedicated question and answer sessions. Follow-up materials and a link to the recording will be sent afterwards. And please take a minute at the end to complete the evaluation survey. We'll put a link in the chat. I also want to take a moment to let you all know that Kotak is back. This uh, page has our website and we also have an email address, oral health support at UCSF. This is the team that we have together this time uh, in this new contract period. You can reach all of us at the oral health support at UCSF email address and uh, we'll address, direct your query to whichever is the correct team member. And now for our topic today, website design, development, and maintenance. It's my pleasure to introduce our speakers. First, I'll be introducing the three speakers from Los, Ange from Los Angeles County Oral Health Program. Our first speaker is going to be Erica Gist. She's the Senior Health Educator for Los Angeles County Department of Public Health Oral Health Program. She has served as a Senior Health Educator and Health Educator for the Department's Tuberculosis Control Program and Health Education Administration Program for a combined 16-year career history with the department. Ms. Gist has an extensive background in program planning and implementation, training and development, and project management. Some of Ms. Gist's accomplishments include coordinating and executing the annual Health Education Practice Conference and the Department of Public Health Countywide Wellness Expo. Our second speaker from Los Angeles will be Lynn Chan. Dr. Lynn Chan is a dentist from the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health Oral Health Program, focusing on underserved and vulnerable populations. She has worked in private practice before joining the oral health program team in 2018. Dr. Chan hopes to bring her qualifications and experiences to improve the oral health of the community at large. The third speaker from Los Angeles is Andrew Quay. Andrew Quay is the administrative assistant for the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health oral health program, where he aids in handling contracts, finances, budgetary, and other programmatic matters. These include serving as a webmaster for the oral health program website and hosting and organizing oral health program conferences and presentations. With that, I will let the Los Angeles County speakers uh, take over. So are you able just to see the first screen? Awesome. Yes, okay. 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 All righty. Awesome. Well, hello. My name is Erica Giss, and I am the Senior Health Educator for the Oral Health Program with LA County Department of Public Health. I'd like to share with you some of my, um, my experiences as well as um, just give you an idea through the lens of a health educator, some of the strategies as well as techniques that were used to help guide and redesign OHP's website to assure it is readable. I'll go into greater detail on the definition of readable in my upcoming slides. Okay, I apologize, that should have been right here. Okay, that should have been right there, there we go. All righty. So the Oral Health Program's webpage has two main purposes. One, to provide Agilinos with basic oral health information and resources needed to make appropriate health decisions. So basically we're practicing oral health literacy. But secondly, we also wanna be able to provide health practitioners, educators, and students with access to current health information and reports as well as toolkits. So basically in a nutshell, our goal is to meet the needs of both lay people and professionals. In addition to our web pay pur purposes, OHP has a few other goals. What are some of the main goals for OHP's website redesign? Our goals are to create a user-friendly and readability-friendly website and be able to measure how easy it is for visitors to read what's on the webpage and understand text on the webpage as well. 
by looking at how we use things like font choice and size, colors, spacing, the length of a narrative, et cetera. Also, we wanna take in consideration the context as well as the actual words and sentences that are used. So why is our website redesign so important? Because readability is important. Most website visitors want to be able to find the information they're looking for as quickly as possible due to limited time. And readable content affords them the opportunity to do just that. Also, we want to be able to connect with our readers culturally as well as equitably. As a result, we have used and will continue to use content and images that appeals to people and communities of colors and others. Lastly, we want to exercise oral health literacy. By making our website more readable, we enable our readers to obtain, process, and comprehend the basic oral health information and resources and services on our website in order to make sound oral health decisions. So what strategies is OHP using to make our website more, um, more readable? And this is basically, again, coming from my perspective as a health educator. But we use tools like readability checks and assessments. I personally use Microsoft's Word's readability program on most occasions. And what it does is take the, my text and generate a score, which is a number that tells me how easy it will be for someone to read a particular piece of text and is based on the length of sen sentences and words that I happen to use in my narrative. And I'll give you uh, more detail on this particular slide. As a senior health educator for OHP, I am tasked with creating the monthly oral health spotlight and having it posted to our website. In this particular example, which is posted on the slide, you can see that my content, and I'm not too sure if you can actually see my arrow, but uh, right here, you will be able to see that my content is at a sixth grade reading level with a reading ease of eighth grade. This means that excuse me, this means that the text should be relatively simple for the average adult to read. So basically what happens is once a score is generated, it is looking at it from a scale of one to a hundred. So with a hundred being the most easiest to read, and one, of course, being the most difficult. So if you have a reading score between maybe, let's say, 60 and 80, you could expect for the average uh, person or average adult to read it. But again, the ultimate goal is to uh, get the score as high as possible, if you will, in this particular uh, case. Another strategy that we happen to use is um, images. So diverse images and pictures are pretty much, again, another strategy that's used on our website. Because we are visual people and a picture is worth a thousand words, we use images to attract attention to a topic or theme of the month like the oral health spotlight. Also, it is noted that pictures can spark emotions, make connections, and even draw attention to what we want people to learn more about. And because of this type of uh, these types of pictures, we have used and we will continue to use on our webpage. And we hope that visitors will continue to come and visit our website as a result. Layout is also incredibly important. It takes in consideration factors that we, as novices uh, to website design, may not take in consideration. For example. Layout design improves the user experience. Um, basically, what this means is making the content on the screen more digestible. So basically, we're breaking up the information into sections. And this um, photo is purposely kind of fuzzed out because Dr. Chin and her upcoming slides will be able to, uh, you know, give what our um, redesign looks like. And I didn't want to give it away. Um, next, also, uh, layout design also makes it more readable, uh, taking otherwise very dense information and placing it in a very uh, digestible layout. Um, a company with, it, uh, excuse me, images uh, makes it just a little bit more visually appealing as well as more digestible for the lay person. We can't have a website that's readable without incorporating health literacy, oral health literacy, personal literacy, as well as organizational literacy. In the upcoming slides, I will be able to provide examples of our website content and how we utilize or incorporated health literacy uh, with the information that we're actually placing on our website. So I like to begin with uh, health literacy. 
Okay, health literacy basically can be defined, if you will, by a Healthy People to, uh, 2020, actually going into 2030, excuse me, the degree to which individuals have the capacity to obtain, process, and understand basic information and services needed to make appropriate health decision decisions. And so as you can see here, this actually uh, is one of the um, flyers that was placed on our website, but it was placed in the form of the banner. So um, in the form of health literacy, we were able to allow ind individuals to easily obtain uh, this information. Once again, it was in the form of a banner. It, the information is very easy to process. Um, as you can see, uh, the use of cartoon images, you can see the exaggerated sizes of the percentages and things of that sort. And it also uh, will follow under uh, easy to understand. Once again, the information is very basic. But it also encourages making uh, an appropriate health decision by per, um, allowing individuals to uh, click onto a link to uh, receive additional information, if you will. The next, um, the next literacy I would like to go over is oral health literacy. And oral health literacy, of course, goes beyond the uh, person's ability to read. Um, it's reading that's basically intersecting with the ability to evaluate, understand, and use oral health information and services to make good decisions about oral health. Um, and so as you can see here, specifically with the oral health spotlight, this information, of course, is easy to obtain. Again, as I mentioned in my previous slide, uh, the information is also very easy to process as well as, again, understand uh, because I did have it or I do have it at a sixth grade reading level. And of course, at the flesh uh, reading ease of 80, again, um, uh, tailoring it, it more or less to the uh, individual or adults who are able to read, if you will, at also an eighth grade reading level. Uh, so um, this information, again, is easy to obtain, process, understand, and um, I also have provided hyperlinks so individuals can easily click, but if they don't want to click, they can also um, call. So I also in incorporate phone numbers on the uh, resource as well. And uh, personal health literacy um, also is something that's being incorporated, and personal health literacy, of course, is the the degree to which individuals have the ability to find, understand, and use information and services to inform health-related decisions and actions for themselves as well as others. And so with this particular um, flyer that we have posted, uh, which was also a banner, and I do foresee it being a banner on our next or on our re redesign, uh, again, allows individuals to easily find uh, this information. It's, um, as you can see, the use of bulleted points by the use of checks, making it easy to understand. It's, again, written in uh, plain language. We also have provided uh, services in the form of hyperlinks as well as phone numbers. And this information, of course, could be uh, used individually or even shared uh, collectively. And lastly, there is organizational uh, health literacy, which is the degree to which organizations equitably enable individuals to find, understand, and use information and services to inform health-related decisions and actions for themselves as well as others. So when I look at this, we're looking at the overall um, actual web page. So we're not looking specifically at any one health uh, material, but we're looking at the website overall. And in general, we're, we're practicing and we're um, ensuring that our actual website is equitable. So we're making sure that it's very inclusive of, of individuals uh, that are going to visit it. So whether that's uh, using diverse uh, imagery, if you will, uh, the type of language, or even um, highlighting any type of, um, when I, I don't want to use the word celebration, but I do know when I um, happen to write the oral health spotlights, I am making sure that I'm incorporating culture as well as uh, a combination of other things to make sure that it is equitable as well as, you know, it's inclusive. But I'm also, or the um, department or our program, if you will, is assuring that the information, again, is uh, easy to find, the content is easy to understand, and that um, it is um, allowing individuals to uh, find information on, on the particular site that they will be able to uh, follow through, you know, as an extra actionable item, if you will. So uh, we will provide uh, the hyperlinks as well as phone numbers where individuals will be able to, uh, again, take that next step to assuring that they're uh, taking good care of their oral health.
And on that note, I am going to pass it off to Dr. Lynn Chan, and she will go a little bit further into the purpose for our website design. Thank you, Thank Erica. You. Erica, you need to stop sharing so I can. Okay. Good morning. Can you see my screen? Not no, yet. I cannot. Do you see my screen now? No. Sorry, Ethelyn. Okay. How about now? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So good morning. I'm Lynn Chan. I'm one of the dentists um, from the Los Angeles County Oral Health Program, or OHP. And I will be discussing the various mock-ups for our web page redesign. So our program contracted with the media firm to develop Love Your Baby's Teeth campaign. And we asked if they can provide some recommendations for our website uh, redesign. And Andrew and I are the interface between the media firm and our OHP program. And as Erica mentioned, the purpose of our redesign is that we want it to be user-friendly, um, readability-friendly, easy to navigate, and to provide valuable and accurate data in, and information. And this is our original web page, um, website layout with information for patients, community partners, and dental providers. There is also a data dashboard, which includes the LA County Oral Health Chart Book. The chart book catalogs all the oral health surveillance data of LA County, and it is continuously updated to ensure that the most relevant and updated information is readily available to the public. We also have an infographic section as well, which contains also the most recent LA County data. The website contains um, an interactive map of low-cost, no-cost dental clinics, which is a resource for LA County residents to find dental clinics within a 10-mile radius of where they are. And as well as our reports, um, we have our Community Oral Health Improvement Plan, our Smile Survey 2020, and our Disease Burden and Prevention Report 2021. This is the first mock-up from our media firm. Uh, as you can see, they incorporated, incorporated our um, campaign characters, backgrounds, and themes. These are the same two designs. Um, just one is a GIF that shows how the top carousel, as you can see, is rotating, and the other is a JPEG, which is a static image. The contents under each button are the same as our original website. This is their second mock-up based on the following request. We requested that they make it look a little bit more professional, meaning we wanted to have a little bit more subdued color palette um, to, vo to avoid in overwhelming visitors, um, more legible fonts for readability, and less character theme. We asked also if they can incorporate uh, more realistic graphics as well as graphics of our original reports as well. And if they can put all the graph, all their, um, all of our reports on the same row, um, as you can see, they're in the last row um, versus having the reports be spread out throughout the website. This is their last mock-up based on our feedbacks, and they also included suggested images and title, and and titles um, from Erica to make it more readability friendly. We submitted it to our Department of Public Health Office of Communications for their review and approval. 
the media contractor, they used all uh, three creative design programs such as InDesign, Photoshop, and Adobe Illustrator to create the page and all the assets within it, such as the main banners and buttons. Uh, they, they were able to package this in JPEGs and working art files for us. And they provided, and we provided this package to our Office of Communications. So they, the Office of Communications was able to adjust the colors and provide some layout revisions, such as, as you can see, the titles have been moved underneath the, the tiles or the buttons, and as well as also some graphics as well. And this is our final mock-up. Um, this is their final mock-up. Um, they be we requested some more edits, um, such as some suggested um, edits to the titles, as, as well as some images. And this is what we came up with, um, with the help of our Office of Communications. And now um, Andrew will be discussing the back end of the web page we designed. Thank you. I will now stop sharing. All right, thank you, Dr. Chan. Let me make sure. All right, is my screen sharing? Okay. Hello everyone. Yeah. My name is Andrew Quay and I serve as the Los Angeles County Oral Health Programs Webmaster. Uh, when I joined the program two years ago, I had absolutely no HTML knowledge or training, but I was able to accomplish and implement the ideas and mock-ups that Erica and Dr. Chan were showcasing earlier through the resources available to me. And I hope the tips I can provide will be able to help your program as well. Let's see. There are three resources that I believe all local programs should have access to from their departments, and that's pre-existing templates, an information systems team, and a communications team. For Los Angeles County, all the programs under the Department of Public Health have standard regulations and templates to adhere to. The department also provides us with some sample templates to use, such as the one displayed here. This is usually a great starting place for you to plug in the specifics of your program, and you should be able to reference and collaborate with sister programs for any lessons or innovations they have discovered with their templates for what's possible and for what works with, for them. I believe every department should also have access to an information systems team that runs the actual website servers. Any time our program has encountered a technical challenge in regards to our website, we've been able to consult with the department's information systems team with our goals and have them provide us with simple templates for what is possible within our system. For example, earlier this year, our program wanted to implement an interactive map where users could find the closest no cost or low cost dental clinic uh, to their location. Our information systems team was able to take our data and provide us uh, a working model and template in which we could tweak for our own website. Our uh, communications or media team also helps us learn the best way to streamline our information for our audiences. They consult on layout, formatting, images, and wording to make sure our information reaches our target demographics, as uh, Erica presented before, whether that be industry professionals or the layman seeking dental services and information. Other resources I've employed on my own unofficially include searching for HTML styling web pages to learn how to implement basic items such as tables and grids or banners. Uh, web design tutorials are also helpful to learn any new additional design tips such as formatting and placement. Both terms can be easily Googled to great results and I've linked a website I personally use for reference. As for informal contacts, it never hurts to ask for advice or tips from friends, family, or acquaintances that are more practiced in the field. Another tool our department employs is the free standard version of Google Analytics. Uh, Google Analytics has a free service that tracks the traffic to your site uh, and uh, that receives uh, specific pages over time. Uh, as you can see here, the graph and data can provide insight on how, how traffic and site activity changes over days, weeks, and months. Uh, this data is important for us to figure out what we're doing to increase or decrease traffic to certain parts of our website and what changes to our websites gets results. 
our current website is a result of all of our lessons learned using Google Analytics to track uh, any lasting positive trends. Some of the things we've learned are uh, the importance of immediate visibility. Data shows that most visitors are likely to notice or interact with what is visible at eye level upon opening a website. Uh, we have focused placing the most important information for visitors looking for help or resources at the front and top of the page for this reason. There's also actionable verbiage. Uh, we've learned that from experience that placing words like find, read more, click here, encourages visitors to dig deeper into the website to more detailed pages for more information, freeing the front page from clutter. And related to the last two is the implementation of a large rotating banner uh, to free up the prime real estate of the front page and prevent a constantly changing template, uh, including an eye-catching banner that rotates through several links is important. We found that this is best to use to display new and less permanent pages, such as temporary events or announcements. As Dr. Chan presented earlier, we've incorporated all of our lessons into a new redesign, uh, our website that we will be launching soon. Uh, the focus here is to remove clutter, streamline presentation, reduce the number of clicks needed to traverse the page, and maximize the real estate of the front page. However, website development is an ever-evolving process, and we still have a long way to go, even with our new redesign coming soon. Here is a view of a visitor point of view of the actual site. Um, improving on the mock-up already, we've removed that second large banner so that more content is visible as soon as the website opens. And the next thing we're working on, not displayed here, is making that first most visible row of links be more focused of the layman seeking resources and information. As we found that stakeholders and industry professionals usually will come to your site with a destination in mind, and where to find it. So they need less hand, uh, visual handholding. There's always new lessons to learn and improvements to make. Uh, thank you everyone for watching our presentation and we'll be answering questions at the end. Now, if I can stop sharing properly here. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Erica, Lynn, and Andrew. Some really great overview information and some great details and tips as well. Um, we want to take a little bit of time to give participants the opportunity to ask any of the speakers from Los Angeles County any questions. Mylene, go ahead. Hi, yes, um, I actually have a question um, for, for any of you to the platform that you use to do the web design, I'd imagine it would be the same across for the entire um, public health website. Are you using something like um, Adobe Experience Manager or, or anything of that nature? Uh, I can answer that question. So we're, uh, <laughs> our tech is a little behind, to be honest. We're using SharePoint to directly, uh, you're right, it is standardized across our department. We uh -huh. we use um, SharePoint to edit HTML documents directly, which is very, very old school. I'm sure a lot of programs, they've been wanting us to move us to a more modern design page, um, uh, WordPress, but the okay. uh, pandemic has delayed that for us. It's, apparently, it's supposed to be much easier to drag and drop elements for design. Sure. No, no, absolutely. Thank you so much. I just, just curious, um, and just thinking about our own that we have in San Diego and just uh, understanding what other folks are using and leveraging that uh, information. So thank <laughs> you very much, I appreciate it. Are there other questions? You can type them in the chat or feel free to unmute yourself and ask them out loud. Or you can use a little hand icon. One question I had is from the analytics. What were some of the things that you learned from tracking your web traffic? Uh, so as um, we noticed in the, we stated in the presentations, things like uh, actionable verbiage really, really helps. Uh, anything that wasn't immediately visible was losing traffic. That's what we found. So we tried to put more things into uh, immediate view and, um, it was also, as I said, 
we we'll plug um, information or our website in presentations we do. And so stakeholders will know exactly where to go for the infographics uh, Erica and Dr. Chen were mentioning, any of the hard data. Um, but we also found that a lot of people who visit our site are members of the public looking for resources, right? And they don't really have interest for that. And so they won't really dig for that and they'll just go for uh, whatever they see in the front page. Got it, thank you. Julia has a question. What are the major links that you see people visiting the most? Major links are, as we, uh, as mentioned in my presentation, a big one was the find a local dental clinic closest to you. That is a big one. And, and others are any redirections to how they can find financial support for uh, dental coverage and uh, insurance. So it's a lot of um, reaching, I guess, underserviced populations for uh, getting them proper dental care. Um, so these, those are like regular community members ac accessing your site to find right. dental care. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, we have another question. On the page, you have an option for resources. What do you include in that page? So there are two um, resources. There's one resource for dental providers. Um, we have the CDC as well as the CDA and the American Dental Association as well. Um, <clears throat> another resource is the dental health. We have tobacco cessation resources as well on that and as well as any um, the like water districts, fluoridation flat facts. We have those resources as well. Fantastic. Thank you. Are there any other questions before we move to Orange County? All right. We'll have uh, additional time at the end if, if any questions occur to you all. All right. So now it is my pleasure to introduce Sam Monroy from Orange County LOHP. Sam has worked in public health and social service organizations for the last 15 years focused on program development, implementation, and continuous quality improvement. Sam is focused on systems change, developing whole health programs for Ryan White clients, implementing standards of care for a variety of services, and addressing equity through data analysis and quality improvement efforts. The last three years, Sam has led the local oral health program for Orange County, developing a structure by which the county can achieve its vision of oral health equity for all Orange County residents. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Kristen, for that introduction. Um, one of the things that I want to first say is that I, I like to thank uh, my team. Um, working on the website, doing updates, trying to tinker with it uh, takes an entire village to do. Um, unfortunately, websites or web pages aren't a thing that you can just set them up once and you're good because you're perfect and everything works the way you want it to work. Um, it can it means that consistently having to tinker with it, figuring out what works, what doesn't work, how do you keep kind of driving traffic to it? Um, because ultimately you want people to go to your web page or website to be able to get the information you're trying to share with them. Um, and so how do we do that, right? So uh, part of what I wanted to go over today is looking at the evolution of our web page and website, right? So I, I use these two terms because what we started with uh, wasn't an entire site that we, you know, that we could play with and develop out and do what we wanted to. We started with just a web page under our county's uh, overall website. Um, then we started thinking about the objectives of our website. What are we trying to get from it? Why is this important? Who are we trying to reach? In what ways? What do they need from us? Um, tips and things that we've done to be able to maximize the website. So that means that we're looking at the user experience, looking at their user needs and, and what are they looking for and, and how do we 
uh, create an environment where people want to come back to our website and spend more time on our website. Um, and then how do we maintain that website? Uh, again, like I said, it isn't something that you can just set it up, you're done with it, you come back to it for, for a year later and figure out did this work or not. Um, I do have the chat open, so if people have questions, please go ahead and, and enter in the chat or come off a uh, mute. Um, I already speak in tangent, so I'm, I'm perfectly fine answering questions that way. Um, so I know that a lot of us, based on the, on the survey that was done at registration, we're all over the place, right? So some of us are still working on trying to figure out how to get a web page up. Some of us have our health department web page, which is where we started. Uh, other of us have standalone websites. Um, there is a gray bar covering your slide title. That's funny, there's nothing on my screen. Oh, is that better? Fixed, yes, thanks. Oh, it was the, apparently I didn't take off the alert that the transcript was available. <laughs> Um, so we started, uh, as just having a web page, right? So our public information office, uh, communications, our division said, here is your page. You can do what you want with it. And then when we started to ask things that we wanted to do with it, they realized, no, you can't do that. Yes, we're okay with willing to do that. That's possible. And we soon kind of quickly realized that it took an incredible amount of time and energy to make changes to the web page. That, and, and with that was, if for example, we realized that the email had changed of who we wanted to go, or we wanted to put an event that was coming up that our, pro, our partner had asked us to add, that would typically take somewhere between two to three weeks to get implemented. And which after learning a couple of times where they would finally put it, put up the, uh, the item and then it's already passed and it's still on our webpage, kind of gave people a sense of, well, this isn't really up to date. It, it isn't really useful. But at the same time, we were able to at least explain a little bit about what our program did and then offer some links. Um, the other thing that was difficult about having a page under the health department was that the web address wasn't something that was instinctive or easy to go to. Meaning that I'd had to tell people we're under OCGov for the Orange County government, under the healthcare agency, which is the public health department, in the division of services and programs, under wellness, safety, and prevention, and then you can find the local oral health program. That is not an easy way for people to remember how to get there, right? So one of the things that we had to make sure is that with anything that we sent out in newsletters, email blasts, whatever it was, we always had to include the direct link to our page because we realized that that's the only way people are gonna truly be able to find it. Under this webpage, we averaged about 100 visits uh, a month. So this webpage, it still exists now, but now we direct people over to our full website. Um, but before our website stood, uh, looking at the months of January through June of 2019, we typically got about 100 visitors a month. Now, from there, we moved to being a, a, a location where we wanted to have information, a home for information, right? So the, our collaborative, our partners, we have hundreds of things that we want to be able to put to the community, information that we want to give them. And so we realized that having that just the one web page wasn't going to work to be able to do that. That we really needed to have a host of locations. So we, we created this standalone site, uh, Smile Habits OC. Um, it is something easier to remember, easier to type in the link to it. 
Um, and for that, I want to say that I, I'd like to really uh, say thanks to our leadership um, that said, we understand what you're trying to do. We understand that being under the county just isn't working for you. Um, that we really need somewhere else that's a standalone where you have more kind of control of the things that you want to do. And that the structure that the county has of how we run our website isn't going to work for that. Um, so they gave us the blessing to be able to have our own standalone website. Um, IT kind of helped us set it up because they were experienced. And then um, communications, they randomly check it, maybe once a month, maybe once a week, maybe you know once a year to make sure that it is still in line with what the county message should be. Um, so that they, they feel comfortable with the items that we're sharing or the information that we're doing. Um, and for the last, I would say about year and a half, maybe through halfway through COVID, so late 2020, we realized this works for us, but now we need something more. So one of the things that came out from COVID is that our partners in the community needed more, that they wanted uh, our website to be a resource for them, a location where all those items that we had been sharing to them through our collaborative, through our work groups or the newsletter, that they had a location to find those things because what would happen uh, usually is I would get a random email and said, hey, remember six months ago on this work group, there was a person talking about tobacco use prevention and they said that there were some resources for our providers to send people to who want to quit. Where do I find that? Where is that? Can you send that to me? Um, so one of the things is like, okay, how do we do that, right? So eventually what we found is that this section of that web of the website was where people kind of started to go the most. So I, I will show you, let's see if I can. So this LOHP page, I'll talk a little bit about, it's not a, it's a, it's not a public facing page. So what we found out by having a standalone website that we could do is that we could have pages that the public will go to. So for example, you click on your web browser, you hit Smile Habits OC, you go to the main page, right? So these are all public facing items. It's meant for the community. It's meant for uh, those that are looking for resources or information, things like that. But we also needed a way to provide resources to our partners, our members of our collaborative. And so what we found that we could do is that we could develop these pages that with direct links that would not show up if you are clicking throughout this part of the website. And the good thing about that is that we were able to then put items meant for providers, meant for our service organizations. So we created a way that if you're looking for our local or health resources, you click on that, it automatically takes you to the list of all those items, right? So if you're trying to help a client with, so CalOptima is the managed, managed care program for Medi-Cal here in Orange County. So if someone has a Medi-Cal, they get free transportation to dental appointments. How do I access that, right? So we now have these all these items linked. And if there's a different additional languages that we have for items, we will then say this is available in Spanish and Vietnamese. Uh, so we have our, you know, COTAC is listed here. So this is intended for our partners and community providers to say, okay, here's how I can use that. And let me go back to this. Okay. So we start to realize, okay, we need to be a resource 
for our partners, for our, our community providers of where they can access those items. So one of the things that then we start to realize we need two versions of our web pages, essentially. So here we have our public facing uh, web page on HPV, and here we have our providers. So what does that mean in reality, right? So when you go to HPV, so you go oral health information, I want, uh, I have a school-aged child, six to 13, we make sure that the pictures match that age range. Uh, I'll go into the videos a little bit later. And then I'm like, HPV, why is HPV here, right? Uh, this is oral health, why, why do I have HPV? We give a little bit of explanation of how HPV uh, is recommended for this age group of how it's a cancer prevention tool. Um, and because a lot of people don't make that connection. And then, we provide some CDC handouts. And, you know, we just, we provide that for the parent in this case, most likely of that six to nine year old. However, our dental provider, who's probably gone through our HPV training, they need much more than that, right? So when they go to their version of the HPV resources page, we have, information as a can cancer prevention tool. We have our uh, recommendations. So for example, we put together this handout about HPV for cancer prevention. We gave them the, you know, the medical information behind it, how to do the screening, what the CDC says, everything with links, right? To get the buy-in from that dental provider. Um, and then in addition to that, what other information may they need, right? So we're looking at policies and guidelines. So it's not just LOHP who's telling you this about HPV, it's the ADA. It's the American Academy of Pediatric Dentists and it's the CDC, right? So these are the main institutions that are the subject matter experts. Here's their information from them. So don't just take our word for it, Here's what they're saying about that. Where individuals can get the vaccine. So if you are trying to help a client, a patient, figure out where they can get it, here's some locations in the area that can do it. So you click on the link, it automatically takes you to the location where they can schedule an appointment. And then lastly, what is some additional information that they may need, right? Do they need handouts to give to their patient? Um, you know, a lot of times we, we, we provide these uh, papers. If they ask for copies, we send them copies, things like that. But ultimately, we want them to be able to know where they can get these information so that they can consistently be able to grab it when they need it. Because we, we, we realize that that is kind of the most helpful way for them to be able to do that. So again, continuously looking at how do we become that resource? And then, but also, you know, as, as an LOHP, one of the things that we work on is HPV, but then there's also, we found that there's other ways for us to kind of continue to advance those goals that we have. So we're now developing uh, a web page specifically for uh, school nurses so that they can have a own video, the requirement on score, how they can have that information so that when we're doing a training, one of the things that we realize is that we will then get questions two weeks later and say, hey, I was at this training you did and I'm now trying to do it, but it's not, I thought it's supposed to say this or I'm supposed to click on that and I don't see that, right? So then your staff becomes technical assistants on trying to determine what are people looking at? Why isn't that not there? So one of the things that we have found is that about giving them these direct links after training. So just like we did with HPV, now we're going to start doing it with the COAs, is that that allows them to have a place to go, 
And it's not just trying to Google search uh, endlessly as to how do I do this, right? So we found out, for example, in our training with the, with the school nurses and in, for all of the districts was that some of the nurses said, hey, I have this information. However, I'm already entering it into ARIES or some other type of electronic health record that the district is using, I don't have time to enter it there and then having to enter it in SCORE. It, it just, I don't have time for that, right? So one of the things that we realized, reached out to ARIES and said, well, they can download the report from ARIES and then upload it into SCORE. Great. Now we're working on the video to show people how to do that. So that when, if that is the barrier of time and effort to be able to enter things twice, that now there's a way around it. There's a loophole per se, of how can I increase that? So we've started piloting it uh, with two schools. So we originally in Orange County, we have 28 districts. We had uh, on average about seven who participated. Some years it would be five, some would be six, some, ten, some years it would be three. Um, so we've gotten two additional districts. We're up to nine. Uh, the hope is to get to 15 uh, by the end of this school year by helping them kind of figure out these tools of how to do it kind of more effortlessly. Um, but being able to kind of guide people to a location where they can grab this information on their own, or they have a, a support system now, um, has been helpful to us to kind of continue to engage them in this conversation. And so uh, just like Andrew mentioned for LA, one of the things that, that's important for us to do and that we continue to do is look at how do we maximize our website? So we've realized that when we were doing the standalone web page in the dist on our county website we were averaging about 100 clicks right now on a monthly if there is no campaign we typically get typically get between 1500 and 1800 clicks uh a month and so that means that our people are either going directly onto our website or they're using other other links that we've sent out. So for example, we've been able to go to, um, so as you go here, you click on blog. We've now, it's forced us to send this information out every single month. So we have a newsletter that goes out. It goes to all our partners, it goes to individuals who've given us their web, uh, their email address, and it's about what's happening around oral health that month, right? So it could be National Brush Day. It could be uh, things about, you know, how do you pay for uh, dental care, things like that, back to school. Um, so all of these items, we develop these blogs every single month. We send it out with the newsletter. Um, and we piggybacked with our other partners. So we have in every dental newsletter that we send out, we also have a message about nutrition. And then we have a third resource that we share. And that third resource can be a revolving item. So we've included things from Smile California. So right now that they're having their Facebook events for uh, members, we'll include that. Sometimes it's been um, pantries that have opened up or changed hours um, or have expanded who they're providing uh, food for. And that has really driven how many people come to our website because not only are they now getting the oral health message, but they're getting how it's intertwined with individuals' overall health. Um, and they keep now finding, hey, this is a resource, right? Um, I think that one of the other questions that we got for LA was how do people, you know, know about different dentists? So there's certain things that we want to highlight right away, right? So yes, individuals can scroll down 
and find different information that's going up and those will change uh, monthly, every other month, we kind of change what we're highlighting. But what, what never changes is this information up here. So we always will have, you can find it by group, you can help find a dentist, you can help find information on how to pay for dental care. Uh, and then we have our blogs, information about our program. So these are kind of the different things that we know that people are usually having to go quickly to. So we try to kind of put those right up front and how we've done that has been based on the analytics. And uh, so sometimes, so for example, we were doing a campaign about our uh, pregnancy and postpartum pain. So we're talking about making sure that you see the dentist during pregnancy. And we were finding that right after we sent the newsletter out, we got about 5,000 clicks uh, for that month onto that page, meaning, hey, we've hit, we've hit a, a, a topic here that people are want to know more about, that they're passionate about, that they have questions about. But then we realized that they were staying about a minute and a half on that web page. I don't know about you. I, I think I, I read pretty quickly. There's not a lot of information that I'm going to grab in a minute and a half, right? So that made us think there's something wrong here. If we're seeing in the analytics that people are only here for a minute and a page, and so it'll tell you the average session, duration, things like that, they're not staying here long enough to get the information. So is the information so easily digestible that they got it and they left? Or is there an issue? Are we not having the right information on the web page? Um, so we said, okay, brought that page, that specific page to our one of our work groups and said, hey, help us figure out what's wrong with this page. Why aren't people staying on this page? long enough or clicking on all of the links to get more information. Um, so we retooled it. We looked at uh, how do we improve that? And ultimately, we're now averaging about eight and a half minutes on that page. Uh, so the last camp the last newsletter and campaign that we did for uh, dental care during pregnancy, we now averaged about eight and a half minutes on that website. That tells me that more people are actually reading the information. They're clicking on the links. They're looking at the video. Um, and that the, that is now essentially showing that there's more engagement with the information that we're providing. So that's kind of how we look at some of those things. And so some of the things that we've realized that we need to figure out is how to translate our page. And so, we have really good control over our English page, right? Our staff speaks English. We have various subject matter experts. We're actually very good also with our Spanish page. So we have an actual standalone Spanish page. So on our website, it ends with uh, SP at the end. It'll automatically give you the page and everything in Spanish where we have kind of developed that language to make sure that it is easily read it, it makes sense because things don't translate very well sometimes right especially technical terms and we're in the process of doing that for vietnamese and it's taken us a very long time because it, it's not as easy as dump it into google translate and make it work the we have found that things don't translate well sometimes so really having to look at how do we simplify our language um, so that it, it better kind of makes sense to people has been a thing. Um, we have also in, instituted, so we do have the Google Translate on our page. You're able to pick any of the languages. So these are the threshold, not the, th the most common languages, not the threshold languages. So for us, English, Spanish, and Vietnamese in Orange County are three threshold language. That's what we try to have everything in. Um, but we also have other uh, languages in Orange County that we we know that we have community members who speak that, right? So we do do the Google Translate um, to at least try to provide some way for people to get information. So then with that, 
that has really kind of pushed us to say, okay, how do we make sure that the translation is as accurate as it can be? So one of the one of the things that we do is making sure that we use uh, in any way. So a lot of our dental information, there's certain words that there will increase your readability. So Erica spoke earlier about using the tools to make sure that it's easily read, right? That people can understand it when they read it. But when you do that and you look at these words, there's certain things that's going to pop up to it that increases the readability. It means it makes it harder for people to read. The word fluoride, strengthen, enamel, cavities, even um, toothpaste can sometimes increase that readability, making it harder because they're larger kind of um, words, multiple syllables. Sometimes it's words that are put together for other things. So what we try to do is whenever we have this kind of valuable information that we want to share, we also want to have some type of image. We want to be able to say, hey, in Google Translate, or if you're looking at this, you may not understand why Florida is important or, you know, how, but you can see, okay, if my child's under two, I need this much toothpaste. If I need, if my child is three or over, I need that much toothpaste. And it needs to say that it's fluoride, right? Try to address some of the health literacy by making things as easily as possible to read and understand. I think that, you know, we've all been in school uh, when we were younger, we're reading sometimes books and you, now you're looking at the picture to understand what the language is. I think the first time I read um, like Shakespearean English, yeah, it's English, but it's not really English, right? It's not the English that we understand. Well, that's the same thing even with Spanish. We have a hard time with Spanish sometimes because Spanish, how you speak with someone from Mexico may be very different than someone from Central America or South America. And even within Mexico, we have individuals whose primary language may be Mayan, may be a native language where Spanish is already the second language. And now you're trying to kind of layer a different le level of Spanish there because, um, you know, sometimes our Spanish what you learn, the Spanish you learn on the streets is very different than the Spanish that you learn in school. And for a lot of our families, a lot of our community members who have uh, lower education um, levels, speaking a very technical Spanish, even though you say, hey, we translate it great, it's right there, may not be as helpful as you think it is. So even when you are, are doing the, using the simple language in English, it's very important that you think about, can I simplify it even more so that when it gets translated, it can work. Yes, I can share the link to the website. Um, so the, the, the other part with pictures is we've realized is that we also need videos that getting people who have lower health literacy levels that sometimes the um, the the just the pictures isn't enough, right? So uh, within our team, you know, think uh, you know one good thing that came out of COVID COVID is that we've had staff to figure out. How, what are different ways that we can do this? So we had staff taking classes on how to do uh, simple videos. And, you know, so I'll show about a minute of this one to kind of give people an understanding of what we've done. So this is meant for uh, older uh, populations. Oh, this is our pregnancy one, sorry. A life-changing event such as finding out you're pregnant can bring excitement filled with many emotions. Regular checkups with your OBGYN is important to help keep you and your baby safe throughout your pregnancy. You are now taking care of two people, you and your baby. During this time, you may have several cravings. Choosing healthy options and avoiding food and drinks high in sugar will give you and your baby a healthy start in your journey together. 
Eating healthy, taking your prenatal vitamins, and being active can provide several benefits for you and your baby. An increase in your hormone levels can cause several changes in your mouth and body. Your mouth may seem drier due to a decrease in saliva flow. This can increase your chances of getting cavities. Frequent vomiting from morning sickness increase acids in your mouth and can cause teeth erosion. Rinsing with a mixture of a teaspoon of baking soda in a glass of water. So, you know, that is information that we were able to put here together here in the office. And, and you look at it and it looks like, hey, wow, that's difficult to do. Honestly, it wasn't. Um, we were Because we were able to use uh, Getty Images, uh, we were able to get video clips and pictures and kind of piece them together. Like if you were doing, um, you know, a video for someone's wedding or something like that. And all those voices, those are all staff that we have in our office. Um, no one wants, nobody likes the way that their voice sounds on, on, on recording. I get that. Um, but we've all done it, right? So all of our staff at one point or another has voiced one of these videos. And that has shown like that people actually click on those items and they view those. Um, so, he, you know, here's another kind of quick video. This is the one for older adults. Daily dental home care helps protect your overall health and can prevent painful and expensive emergencies. Tips for a good dental routine. Brush twice a day with fluoride toothpaste. If you have problems holding the toothbrush, use an electric toothbrush. Change and modify toothbrush handles. They can help hold the toothbrushes more easily. Clean in between your teeth. These are places your toothbrush can't reach. Use of floss holders, proxy brushes, and water picks can help. So, for example, in this video, one thing that we found out is that for that population, a lot of people who had told us, well, the doctor said that I should use a proxy brush. I don't know what that is or what that looks like, right? So having these videos for us has been a way to kind of support that engagement, uh, to give people uh, what it looks like, how they should use it, um, instead of just trying to, for them to understand it in their head or it, it, based on the written language. So it, it's one way for us to address kind of that lack of oral health literacy. With that, you know, it took us a second to also making sure that we had inclusive language. Um, for a lot of things, we had pregnant and postpartum women. Women was listed everywhere. And we've had, you know, when we said, hey, you know, we really need to look at this to make it more inclusive. We did get some pushback from some of our partners and saying, but these are women, only women can be pregnant, right? That was the argument. And, but then finding data that said that, I think it was like close to about 10% of individuals who are pregnant don't identify as women. And so having them talking about equity and, and understanding that we have to, if there's a way for us to look at the language that we use to make it more inclusive, that we do that, right? So here's the same page. Um, we were able to take off, you know, women, change the sentences around to focus on pregnancy and pregnancy during pregnancy in order to kind of avoid those uh, um, language that specifically only spoke to those who identified as women. Um, how many staff work on our website? Uh, it's there's no one person who's a full-time website person. Um, it is a shared responsibility between our health educator, our uh, office assistant, and then myself. So between the three of us, um, we work on the website together. Uh, our health educator is the one who takes the lead. I would say about half of their job is how they do that. Um, 
so those are kind of some of the things that we've looked at languages and we have a couple more minutes so one of the things i wanted to talk about was how do we maintain it so you know the question Stephen, about uh staffing is that we realized that it was cheaper for us to try to do these things in house than to try to pay an organization to do it right to pay an agency to do it i think we were quoted about Thirty to forty-five thousand dollars to set up the website, uh, and then we were charged, being charged about twenty-five to about three thousand dollars a month, something like that, for updates and maintenance. And we realized that it, it's it still would have been very similar to the structure that we had, where we had to keep sending everything to IT to be able to do it. Um, so being able to use staff in-house that already it relates to their work right so the our, our oral health educator the website is education it's how we educate the community and how we educate our providers this is part of their work um so this became a lot of what they did and, and providing them the staff but also being able to do things like wordpress so the webs our county website structure was on a very different uh, website where we, we were very limited in what we could do. Using WordPress, there was tons of templates dropping down. There's tons of videos of how to do these things. And so at first we knew, okay, next month we want to be able to embed a video. How do we do that? We gave ourselves the next time to learn how to do those things. We reached out to IT, say, hey, this is what we're trying to do. And they're like, oh, great. Yeah, this is how you do that. Once staff learned it, then we were up and flying, right? So now we could do it on every page if that's what we wanted to do. We did get a subscription with Getty Images. You know, we realized that we needed to have pictures that were inclusive, pictures that uh, were ever changing and present. So for example, with COVID, we needed ones that actually showed more of what a dental office looked like now. Um, so that allowed us to revenge it. They also have video snippets. That made it very easy for us to kind of put these videos together and layer them with text to create our own videos. When you maintain your website, always have some type of routine to check the links that you have on your page. So even if it's your web page or the full website, we realize that the federal government state agencies they're always making changes to their websites and links go down all the time so we try to do that um every week so it takes about 30 minutes you just have people kind of clicking on links to make sure that it still goes to where you think it does because you'd be surprised how many of them are dropped um and then uh partner resources so making sure that the page is up to date isn't just our staff who does that so one of the things that we were able to work with our partners to do right they wanted to share with the community their availability where they're at their phone number to get people to come to their offices to be seen well that's important to us too as the lohp but I can't be responsible for making sure that this, all of this information is up to date and current all the time. It just takes too much time. So one of our contract, you know, contracts with our provider said, hey, we're happy to list your FQ by the city you're in and all this information, but it's really your responsibility to make sure that this information is still current. If you add a site, especially like a mobile site, or you drop a site, or you change your hours, or you're not seeing your patients, whatever it is, that you provide this information for us so that we can kind of keep those things updated. So help your, kind of put your partners that they take ownership of these pages as well, so that's not just your staff. Uh, Steve, to answer your question, yes, we, if you want uh, the videos that we have, if you guys want uh, our templates, we are willing to share that with any LOHP uh, throughout the state. Uh, and you can, you know, drop down and dump in your specific information for your county. But, you know, it, I come from the Ryan White world. And one of the things that they say 
is uh, steal shamelessly uh, or borrow shamelessly. The we are willing, I know that, you know, to share the work that we do. So like the videos that we have, if you want to be able to either link them or you want to be able to host them on your website, we'll send those to you. Um, I think it's the only thing that you would need to change is the last slide that has our county information on there. But the majority of the video is pretty much just, you know, kind of health education information that applies to any county. You may just want to enter your slide there at the end, or you cut that off. And on the website, you can enter for more information or to help, you know, reach this. Here's who you contact. Um, so we're willing to do that. Great. Thank you so much, Sam. And thank you so much to our uh, Los Angeles County uh, presenters as well. Um, I think, Sam, if you can stick your contact information in the uh, chat, you're going to get a lot of uh, outreach. And no problem. Um, I'm also going to put the evaluation link into the chat. If people could please take a moment to complete that before they go. It really helps us um, track your satisfaction and with this lunch and learn and get ideas for future lunch and learn so we can make sure that we're bringing topics that are of interest to you. Um, and we also have, if you have any outstanding questions, um, feel free to ask them or put them in the chat as well. Um, in particular, if there are any of you from LOHPs where you don't have a lot of control and flexibility over your website, um, we're happy to talk about that and kind of brainstorm ways to troubleshoot that and find ways that you can still have an active web presence without getting caught up in approvals. Kristen, I just wanted to remind everyone as well that um, LA County, we have our um, oral health campaign, um, Love Your Baby's Teeth. So I just remind you, just wanted to remind everyone that you can utilize our campaign materials and co-brand or incorporate it onto your website or your activities as well. Um, we have like um, the milestones, which have oral health guides and tips for for every stage um, during pregnancy and onwards. So I know um, various counties have reached out to us for that. So um, for those counties, thank you for reaching out. And just everyone, if you're, 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 you're welcome to use our, our campaign materials as well. Great. Uh, Lynn, if you want to pop that link to those resources in the chat, that feel free to do that so people can just go there directly. Um, one question for the Los Angeles group, you mentioned the testing the reading levels of your sites. Which tools are you guys and resources are you using to do that or do you recommend? I actually use, um, again, uh, Microsoft Word, they, uh, Word, it actually has, um, let me look at my camera, it actually has it embedded in its software, so that works really well for me, but also, too, um, there are two, which is the Readability Analyzer, which is really, really good, and I'll put that link in there, too, and then there's a WebFX Readability Test, and that actually get you know, uh, give a readability statistic or uh, assessment score on your website. So I think this is an opportunity for those of us who want to just see in general if, if our um, website is actually uh, readability friendly. So I'll put both of those in um, the chat right now. Great. Thank you. Thank you for asking. And for people working on their website, I think it's similar to what Erica said. A lot of times the text, we work it out in Word first uh to see make sure that you know it helps that they allow those squiggly lines where something is misspelled or the grammar is incorrect um you can do as erica said the, the readability uh, but it's also really easy to share you know you cut a paste out of word send in an email say hey can you give me a second pair of eyes would you understand what this is trying to say and then you can just copy and paste it into for us wordpress and it's on the website done
the I know that one of the things um, for those who have not as much control over what the web page looks like or how they can make changes. One of the things that we had done previously or, or, or uh, have done previously is we worked with one of our partners. We have the coalition of community health centers here in Orange County where they were able to say, hey, we'll host your web page with the information. It makes sense because they work with dental directors and dental people. We'll do, you know, we'll have some sub pages for you. And so we were able to provide them with links and resources and things like that for them to be able to have on their page. Um, and then for things that needed to absolutely be on our web page, it's it was just taking the time to make sure that we had leadership that understood what we were doing and trusted that we were doing, right? That we're not going to put any information out there that wasn't going to be responsible or make them look like, um, you know, like, hey, why, especially here in Orange County, people, we're, you know, our board of supervisors don't tend to be as progressive as other counties. You know, there's a lot of concerns about what messages we're, we're putting out there, but, you know, working with them, letting them look at blogs and posts and things like that beforehand and helping them understand, look, the message that we're sending is really important to our community and it isn't controversial. You know, I would say that when I was in Ryan White, there was a lot more topics that people did not want to discuss, especially when you're talking about STDs. But here in dental, it wasn't that. And, and we were able to find kind of those champions to help us say, okay, I see what you're trying to do. Let's figure out how to do this, right? How, how, do, we, how do we get your information out there? Thank you. We have a question for all the presenters. What is one of the first things you think LOHPs can do to improve their program's websites? Like, where should they start? I think for us was understanding who was using our website and why. Um, and and that's, that's how we ultimately ended up with this dual website of one for community facing, because we're just trying to give them information and our resource page, right? Our resources for providers and things like that, because we realized that a lot of our partners and community organizations were the ones really driving the traffic to our website. Um, and they were the ones needing to, hey, where do I send a client who has pain? How do I, you know, why is it important for my pregnant, you know, patient to actually see the dentist? That being able to develop what they needed and what they wanted really kind of helped push the website along. So understanding what am I trying to reach and how do they need us to support them? Great, thank you. What about Los Angeles County? What are your comments in terms of sort of first steps? I was gonna also just mimic uh, what Sam had mentioned, you know, um, basically see who's uh, using and why, but then also reach out and take that maybe just a step further as to who do we want to um, attract? And so um, I'm looking at, you know, uh, taking advantage of, or I would encourage our team, of course, to uh, be able to take advantage of who is it that we want to begin to attract to our particular website and bring them uh, to our website. So I would add to that. And I see that Dr. Chen had uh, turned her camera on, so I would love to hear from her as well. Yeah, so I, you know, just utilize also your um, health educator as well. I'm very grateful to have Erica um, be on our, our program and work on the website as well. Um, making sure it's readability friendly for, for one thing um, as well. And, and, and I know that there are a lot of counties, I know like um, Sam's um, the Orange County, there's a lot of uh, materials out there, existing materials and resources that are available. So we just encourage you just to see what's out what's out there and use existing resources, for example, also in the, our, our campaign materials. I know Placer County also had provided their 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 Halloween um, campaign out as well. So just just see what um, existing resources is out there as well that they, they can utilize onto their own website. Fantastic. Well, thank you everyone so much.
for joining us today. It was really great to have such a large and engaged audience. And also thank you very much to our speakers. You provided a lot of great information and tools that people can start implementing now. Um, a reminder to everybody to please complete the evaluation. Even if you are not part of an LOHP, it's still helpful. We have some NA, NA type answer choices, so it's still helpful to just put your feedback into the evaluation. Um, and just thank you, everybody. Oh, and the information from today's Lunch and Learn will be sent out as and also on Kotak's website. So in case you want to share this with colleagues who couldn't join here today, we'll have the full recording and all any additional resources there. Thank you.